What's up guys, Terrace Cousin here. Welcome back to another code review video. And this one is super, super special because we're reviewing my own old code. Get ready for this because this code is absolutely atrocious and it's way worse than anything you guys have ever sent me. The reason why I'm doing this, the reason why I'm exposing myself like this is because I want to show you guys that even I, someone who's built a whole YouTube channel around teaching React can actually write code that is that bad. And I also want to show you that there is hope. If you've ever thought that your code was bad, trust me, this code is way worse. I'm super excited, I'm super stressed as well, but let's get into it. All right, cool, so let's begin. This is a project that I've written many, many years ago, and this is actually my second ever React project, which I do have a video on that tells you the story of this entire project if you're interested. But now you're also going to get to see the code of this project. And I have to say, believe it or not, this code that I'm about to show you is actually still running in production to this day and is actually still supporting the business that I built it for. That is insane. So because of that, I'm actually not going to reveal the actual name of the business. And I'm also not going to show you much of this code just because it's like proprietary code and this is running in production. But don't worry, what I will show you is like the worst of the worst of this application. And trust me, it's going to be worth it. So let's begin. The first component that I want to look at is the rug page component. Let's open it up and let's see what we have here. So the first thing that I want to look at is the sheer size of this component. If I can just scroll down here, we haven't even gotten to the actual component. The component starts at line 434. That already is a huge red flag. And then if I scroll down all the way here, it goes all the way to, what is it? 200, 2,609 lines of code for this one component. That is insane. Your components in React should never, ever be this big. So let's take it from the top. And don't worry, I'm going to skip a bunch of these things because this will be like an hour long video if I don't. But here at the top, we basically have a bunch of these components. This is styled components. I wanted to try and implement styled components in this project. And this is what it ended up looking like. I have a bunch of these components, which by the way, these are all local to this rug page, right? There's all of these other components in every single file that also have a bunch of these, right? So keep that in mind. But honestly, just looking at these, like I'm super confused, like, I don't know what most of these components are actually doing. Like you have info block, info section, info section header. I mean, I guess these are like pretty self-explanatory, but then like price and availability and descriptions, descriptions role. And actually I just noticed that like, I really like to have these comments on every single component that are basically the same thing just in a comment. And I thought that this would make it clearer. I'm not sure like why I did this, but like these comments are completely useless. And this goes on, right? Like we have disclaimer, we have overview and so on. And this is just too much. It bloats up this entire file and this could have been done a lot simpler. Then we have the actual component, which is a class component, by the way, that goes to show how old this project actually is. And here we're setting some state for this component. And by the way, if you don't know how class components work, don't worry about it. We're not going to go too deep into class components and everything that is potentially unclear. I'm just going to explain to you and show you how it maps to a functional component. So we have the state here, we have a property for loading, which is getting initialized to true. And then we have a property for this rug. And here we're listing all of the properties of the rug, which by the way, there's a ton of them. And we're initializing all of them to an empty string, which is a little bit strange and kind of gives off a little bit of like a red flag, if you will. But anyways, let's move on. We have an edit property here and then a show hidden reason input. This is like a random piece of state that I remember I had to add like later on as I was about to deliver this project and I just put it on here because I wanted to be done with it. But this like is really random and actually I'm not even sure how much this actually does in the code. And then we have this handle save function, which is the reason why I wanted to look at this rug page component. So this business, by the way, is a business that sells Persian carpets. So in this app, all of these carpets are called rugs. That is why we're on the rug page and that is why this is the rug page component. And this handle save function is essentially when you want to update a rug, update its properties, you call this handle save function and it should do all of the work to actually save the rug in the database. But how it goes about doing that save is actually insane. So here we're getting all of these variables and we're getting them through document.getElementById. 
passing the ID of the element and then calling dot value on it. This is a React application. This is a React component. And I thought it would be a good idea to use document dot get element by ID. This really goes to show how little I knew about React and how little I knew about how you're supposed to do something so basic as saving a form in React. Even though this is a class component, there were already at the time better solutions than doing document dot get element by ID. It would have been even better, although still arguably extremely bad, if I used the jQuery instead of doing it this way. It is what it is. I didn't know any better, and this is what I did. And then this handle save function gets all of these properties, all of them through get element by ID. And by the way, all of these duplicate variables all have an fr at the end because this was a bilingual application, and most of these properties had to have two different values for the specific languages, English and French. So that's why a lot of these have duplicate values. Then once we're done getting all of these, which again is a lot of properties, we're then sending them to this this.props.updateDrugInfo to Redux, which is a function that will then send them over to the backend to actually make the update. We're sending all of these one by one once again. And then if I go to the definition of updateDrugInfo, I think it's in admin actions. There you go. We have update work info, and then we're accessing all of these one by one again. And then here's the beauty of it. We're creating a form data object, and then we're appending them one by one again. And then we're actually sending them to Python. The backend is built in Python. And I tell you, trust me on this, because I'm not going to show you, but I'm doing the same thing in the backend. I'm accessing all of these one by one in this endpoint, and then actually saving them in the database, I think even one by one. This was completely horrible. I had no idea what I was doing. And when I saw this now, when I remembered what I did, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I wrote this. And the reason why I had to do it this way, at least the reason why I had to do document.getElementById is I actually made myself forced to do it without knowing any better. Let me now show you the actual JSX of this component. And let me find one input that is actually rendering and trying to get the value. And by the way, this JSX is a complete mess. I'm like having a hard time just finding my way around. But here, we have this SQ, this Q here, and we have this input here. This gets its default value from this.state.rug.sq, but then doesn't actually update the value in the state at any time. That's why I had to do document.getElementById, because I'm not storing this value in the state. However, I thought it would be a good idea to get this default value from the state and just leave it at that. So really, what I should have done is I should have used actually the value from the state because here, if I go back to the top of this component, I have here rug in the state, right? And we have all of these properties here, which I could have used in the form. I could have had every input update one of these properties. And then in the form, I could have actually, instead of passing all of these here, I could have just passed, let me try if I can do it quickly here. Let's just get rid of all of this very quickly. Get rid of this. I could have done this dot state dot rug and just pass this to Redux instead. This would have been a whole lot simpler. And then in admin actions, instead of taking all of these one by one, I could have come here. I could have just removed all of this. And then let me just make sure that I get them correctly. I could have just done rug data and then used this rug data mapped over all of its key value properties and then just appended them all of them to form data in one single loop instead of having to repeat myself over and over again in programming you have this concept of like don't repeat yourself basically i violate this concept i did not even know about this concept at the time of writing this and this is what it led up to this is horrible don't do this please find a smarter way to handle the situation. Now, if you thought this was bad, boy, are you in for a treat. The next thing that I'm going to show you is arguably even worse. So let me open collection page and let's see what this component is all about. So first, before I talk about this component, you have to understand the way that I built this application. This application is built into two parts. There is the front end website landing page, which is actually built with Python and is actually rendering HTML with Python inside. It's using a templating language from Python. And then there's the back end side of things in quotations, because it's not really a back end, 
which is basically the admin panel. This rug page is inside of the admin panel and this collection page is inside of the front end, the website, because some of those pages in the front end actually have React components inside of the Python HTML template syntax, which is really strange. I know it's super confusing. It's also confusing to me, but I thought that this would be a good idea. And this collection page basically is a collection of rugs and it's supposed to render all of the rugs in a specific collection or category, if you will. And the thing that I want you to look at is here in this state, we have on line 33, we have rugs that is getting initialized to window.rugs. That is like the JavaScript window object and it's put in a React component. This is a huge red flag because you're not supposed to do this. And really like, why did I have to use window.rugs to actually get the rugs in this component? And the reason why I had to do this is because these rugs are coming from Python, which is rendering the HTML for this website. And then this component needs to access those rugs, access that data, and then do some things with it. Because, and here's the really important thing about this component, what I'm doing is you have here per page 50, which indicates some sort of pagination, but actually this pagination is completely done client side. What the backend is doing is it's actually returning all of the rugs in the entire database, as many as there are, give them all to me. And then the client in memory is actually storing all of these rugs and then it's doing pagination client side. We're not on any page change fetching a new set of rugs. We're actually determining every time the page changes which new rugs we have to show in this component. Now, the problem with doing it this way, the problem with fetching all of the rugs all at once, as you can imagine, this is going to be extremely slow. And I actually ran into this problem initially, which is why I created this per page thing, because it was extremely slow to load even like 500 rugs, right? Which is a lot of rugs to, to load all at once. So what I ended up doing is I actually ended up from the backend, from the actual server, the Python server, return only the first 50 rugs. And then in the client in React, I secretly fetch the remaining rugs and then I add them to window.rugs. Let me show you. So let's scroll down here and let's find the function that is doing this. It's called get additional rugs. And as you can see here, it's running on component did mount get additional rugs. What this does is once this component mounts with the first 50 rugs from the back end, it's going to fire this request to get additional C rugs for collection. And then it's going to get the response, the rugs in the response, and just add them to window.rugs.push and then set them in this state. And this actually happens. This was my hack, my workaround to fix the performance by only loading the first 50 rugs and then loading the next thousand rugs or how many there were in the background secretly without the user noticing. And then for the pagination, if I can just show you, let me find the correct page. It should be in rugs static front end filters or actually, there it is, we have this rugs component. This is responsible for rendering all of the rugs in a collection, I guess. And here we're doing the pagination client side. We're mapping over all of these rugs and we're checking if the rug is in the current page. If it is, we're rendering it. If not, we're just not rendering it. And this is my solution to display all of these rugs in a collection page. This is horrible. Please don't do this. This is hugely inefficient. If you want to do pagination, do it like server side. Every time you change the page, fire a new request, get the new rugs and ditch the old ones, or maybe store them in a cache if you will, but don't take all of the rugs. Please don't put them in window.rugs. Just do it properly and don't do it this way. All right, cool. Now let me show you one last thing that is also really interesting and also hugely unperformant. Let's open up the dashboard. So this dashboard, now we're back in the backend side of things. So like not the Python server backend, but actually the React backend admin panel. And this dashboard here is basically the main component that is supposed to render and manage all of the different pages in the dashboard. And as you're gonna see here, it's actually managing all of the data for all of these specific pages because it's fetching all of this data on mount in this one component. Now, the problem with this is that this is literally most of the database. I'm literally fetching all of the database, almost all of the database on mount in this one simple component. And then we have this component did update function, which is the equivalent in functional components in React. If you had a use effect and you passed it some dependencies, basically this is the code that runs when all of these dependency changes. In this case with class components, this runs anytime any of the, compo of the dependencies in the component changes. So this, if you put code in here, you have to be careful because this is going to run every time anything changes in this component. What I'm doing here is I have all of these blocks that check for specific things. They're actually checking which 
path are we on currently by doing window.location.href and they're making sure that if we're on this specific page and we have this specific data, which is the data for this page, then do we set loading to false? And we're doing this for customers. We're doing this for rugs, admin slash rugs, admin slash under paddings. We're doing this for pages, which is like an inner pages file page. This is badly named. Like again, don't get confused. It's fine. We're doing this for data, for collections, for disclaimers. We're doing this for all of these different pages because this component is responsible for managing the data of those specific pages. So first of all, obviously don't do this. Create a component for every single page and have that component fetch its own data. And when it has the data, then can it set its own loading state to false, right? So that's the first thing. But then the second thing is actually there's one page here that I missed. If you're attentive, you might figure out what it is. It's actually the index page, right? The index page is actually this right here. I did not include this page in all of these checks here. So what ends up happening is I have a fallback check, which basically is here at the bottom. This basically checks if we have this data and this data and this data. Actually, it's not even here. Sorry, it's here. Oh, I did some work on this. Let me comment that out. This is the state that it was at when I got this code. We're basically checking here. Let me just fix this. We're checking if it's loading and we have this data, this data, this data, this data. And again, we're checking loading twice. I'm not even sure why. This is again a bug. Then we're setting this loading to false. The problem is if you haven't gotten it already, on the index page, which again is not represented by any of these individual code blocks here, on the index page, since none of these are actually going to set loading to false, we're actually going to have to wait for the entire data, the entire database to load before we're setting this loading to false. So when you first open up the actual admin panel and you log in, you're redirected to the index page and you're forced to wait for all of this to load. And trust me on this, I've actually seen it recently because I had to look into something for this project. This takes over a minute to load all of the data. This is insane. And what's even worse, and this you're really gonna laugh, and this is so embarrassing for me, this takes over one minute to load, even though the database, if I can just find it here, if I can scroll up to instance where we have the actual database, even though the database that is running in production today is an SQLite database file that is hosted locally on the same machine that is running the server. There's no backend request that is being done to an actual database hosted somewhere else. This is a local file on the same machine as the server, and this takes over one minute to load. So if you can see the state of this front end code, just imagine the state of the backend Python server code that is actually handling the database and everything with it. It's the same horrible quality as this one, except there, it actually makes a bigger performance impact. So yeah, guys, this is the app that I built for them. This is the app that they paid for. And this was my second ever React project. And as you can probably expect, there's a lot more of these like super inefficient and super weird and random things across this app. But it works. It's running their business in production. It's been running it for multiple years now. And they have a few complaints, but otherwise it works, you know? So yeah, feel free to roast me in the comments. I've already roasted myself many times. And the goal for this was to show you that, you know, this is where you start. This is how your React applications look like, hopefully a little bit better than this when you start. But this is where you have to start from and you have to continuously learn. And if I can do it, if I can get better from this to where I am currently, then you can also do it as well, right? That was the hope with this video is that to give you some confidence in yourself and to help with imposter syndrome and to show you that yes, indeed there is hope and you can do better. And probably you've already done better than this code. So you're already well off and better off than I was. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more code reviews just like these, please make sure to leave a big thumbs up to this video. You can also click here to subscribe. It would really help me out a lot. You can also click here to watch a different video of mine, which I'm sure that is super awesome because YouTube is recommending it to you. And with that being said, my name has been Darius Cousin. This is Cousin Solutions. Thank you once again so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Ciao, ciao.